All right, I brought in these different textures. I layered them on top of the gray. And then I played with the layer mode. Soft light, pin light. That kind of gives me an automatic border. There are ones that I probably won't like, things like hard mix. Right. Let's see. Let's just do multiply. No, nah, it's too dark. So I like to overlay. Okay, now if I want to change the color, I need to rasterize them now that they're full resolution. Remember, these were never vectors, these background textures. But you can see how that helps support my illustration. And what I can do is then, just like when we did compositing, I can go up to uh, color balance or hue saturation. I'm actually just going to change the color completely from that red crayon to a cyan. Not yet. Yeah. So this has, this is what's called a vignetted edge where it's kind of gradated and darker at the edge. But I also want to create just a straight border and that'll be easy at the end. Just adding some white. And I, I might decide to crop it in more. You know, there's lots of options. All right. So I'm liking that kind of color, that pale kind of cyan green. There we go. I want to darken it a little bit. And so that's what I did to my background, right? It's very, very reminiscent of this. So I think I'll, I will push it. Well, we'll see. Then I have this overlay. I'm going to rasterize that. That allows me to play with it. It's hue saturation as well. And even though it's white and gray, I can colorize it and I can give it a color, right? And I'm going to push that a little bit more on the green side. and take that saturation down. So there's so much you can play with. And then I can play with its, its overall opacity as well. And I think I want it pretty opaque because I like the, the vignette. Okay. Now let's see if my type is holding up to this background. Yeah, it looks okay. I think I'm going to darken aspects of it or lighten aspects of it. I'm not sure which yet. Let's try moving this one up and then just taking its opacity down. Nope, that doesn't do it. I think I need to make a duplicate. Move one of them under and then play with the one on top so I don't lose that edge. There we go. Okay, so now a border. So I'm going to use the crop tool again. Now I've rasterized these background textures, right? And I'm going to hold down Option and Shift and shrink in 
to what I want the actual poster to be, kind of hugging to my textures. And I can shift it to the left, shift it to the right. So it just feels right. With the vignette working. I can squeeze it in a little bit if I feel like it needs it. Yep, that looks good. Hit return. And now I'm going to build uh, the white border around it. Here it comes. Da -da 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 -da. And then I can save all my parts. Come on, come on. So these files get big with all these, you know, variations we do to different duplicates. So it's one and a half gigs now. I'm going to turn on um, this. Actually, let's push that down below. Yeah, we'll see. Let's dim this a little. This is a layer adjustment just to take down some of the saturation. Some of my colors are quite bright. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem. All right. So now to add a border, I simply go to um, my default. And I'm going to swap white to be my uh, foreground color. Swap it to be the background color, right? And then I'm going to say image canvas size. And I'm just going to grow it an equal amount on both sides. So if it's 18 by 27 now or 19 by 27, I'm just going to grow it by two inches on each side, which is going to be a pretty thin border, or maybe three inches. So I'll do 21 here and then 30 here. White as the extension. See how this works. And it is annoying because you can't see all the nice texture in the lettering, and that's because they're on layer styles. But it, it's all there. If you zoom in at 100%, you can see it all clearly. And that's why we print <laughs> instead of just look at things on the screen. OK, very good. So if I view it now at 100%, I'll see all those textures together. Come on. You can do a computer, even though it's one and a half gigs. Here we go. So you can see those textures that are in it. This is at 100%. And you can see how they're in the illustration itself, and they're in the text. But I need to save this quickly. Because it's I'm having a hard time. And turn off my inspiration. <laughs> there it all is. Right. Now here are my final tips. Once you are happy with all of it, and you have to <laughs> it's all there. I'm going to save it. But now I'm going to merge all of it into one layer on the top, and I'm going to just run an auto tone adjustment, right? Just to make sure my darks are dark, my lights are light. You still have your vectors in your Photoshop file. So this is kind of like making it print ready. Here we go. And that way it will it will help kind of rasterize all the type decisions in a way that I can see them clearly. Here we go. OK, so what I'm going to do is hold down Option. I'm on my very top layer. And then say Layer, Merge Visible while holding down Option. And it makes a big file even bigger, but this is very helpful. This is our poster. It brings together our, our, our artwork and our type and our coloring. 
for something that we want to put out in the world. And then on this new layer, you see how everything's a little bit sharper because it's now all merged. It's not that anything has actually changed, it's just that the computer is able to render it because it's all in one layer more easily. So it shows me what I really have in the type. And then what I can do is say um, image auto tone and it will adjust the lights and darks. There we go. And you see how it kind of deepened everything a little bit. And I can play with the levels in general, or I can simply dodge and burn directly. So that's a nice way to make your final touches. And then you can always fade that out with opacity. So I always like to do the auto tone. It's kind of the suggestions. Oh, this is, yeah. When the computer lays to the point where you can't tell what it's doing, you got to go back. But once I did that auto tone, I'm now going to fade that opacity back with my original selections and then kind of choose where I want it. And then we just need to save our stuff. So go before all the way back to the auto tone. All right, there we go. I can also try things like auto color. <coughs> And that will kind of shift the hue spectrum to be more even. Especially when we do digital coloring, we tend to make really strong choices. It can be good to see them more balanced. Suggestions as well. Okay, so now I take that opacity. And I bring it back a little. Until I'm happy with it. Okay. So. We save it. It's a big file. You're going to save it as a JPEG. To put into photo bucket. And what's great about this is I didn't spend a whole lot of time coloring it. I want to come back to it, and then I might make total changes to the color. But I've got all the components there, right? Now I just have layers and layer styles. I can edit. I can tweak. I might decide to go darker with the background and lighter with the lettering. I might decide to go with blue lettering and a, an orange background or a tan paper background. So this gives me, this Photoshop file gives me all that versatility because I have my vectors. I have my vector line work, I have my vector type, and I've got the coloring kind of nicely organized around it. That's the ideal. So it's 1.8 gigabytes. Like I said, these posters are close to two gigabytes. But when I save it as a JPEG to put into photo bucket, I want it to be fewer than five, which means I have to take the quality way down. Otherwise our photo bucket's gonna fill up and it's just gonna take forever to upload. So that's the difference between compression formats that support layers and Photoshop formats. So if I say JPEG, full color poster, assignment eight to the desktop and under the quality, we're gonna take it down. And then the four things we're submitting our sketch, our black type, our color type, and then our finished poster. And the finished poster needs to have a background and a border. All right, let's see what saving it at two does. I think I'm going to probably have to take it down to one. And that sounds like it'd be really bad quality, but it actually isn't. It does fine the first time. If I were to open it again and then save it at one again, then it would really be bad. But remember, this is just for putting it up. I've never done something at zero quality before, but hey, let's try it. It's the best I can do. I can always shrink the JPEG. I don't need it to be 
this large, you know, a resolution just to put to photo bucket. 